Okay, we got another kind of lengthy question, but nothing too, too difficult, but with the new technique. All right, the statement reads, a metal bar of mass M slides frictionlessly on two parallel conducting rails a distance L apart. A resistor R is connected across the rails and a uniform magnetic field B pointing into the page fills the entire region. A, if the bar moves to the right at speed V, what is the current in the resistor? In what direction does it flow? B. What is the magnetic force on the bar? In what direction? C. If the bar starts out with speed V0 at t equals 0 and is left to slide, what is the speed at a later time t? Okay, so we got an initial condition question there. And then D, the initial kinetic energy of the bar was, of course, when I have mv squared. Check that the energy delivered to the resistor is exactly 1 half mv squared. All right, well, when in doubt, let's draw it out. So in D, we have a, a bar of mass uh, moving to the right with V, uh, separated by a length of L. And we see that we have um, the resistor over there chilling. All right, so what do we need to know? Well, the EMF as defined by the force could give us the same concept, could give us the same thing. However, there's a new rule, maybe not new, but another rule, the flux rule, that tells us that the magnetic flux, or the uh, integral of B dot dA, uh, with respect to time, gives us the EMF as well. And this time, the geometry is probably going to be easier to work with this. Of course, then we have the heating law, which is P equal VI. We've worked with that before to integrate. All right. So using the flux rule... We see that the flux here, which is the closed integral of b dot dA, so we're looking at what is the b field uh, working over with respect to A, um, but we know that the area here is the length times the width. So if we let some arbitrary uh, width be x, then we know that we have some separate, separated length L and x that the field is working on. Okay. But we see that x, if it's in the horizontal in the same direction that the speed is moving, that that is equal to v. Because we have dx over dt, and that's the only thing changing with respect to time. b and l are both consistent. <clears throat> so we see that we have the emf here is equal to negative blv. So if this is true, then the emf is also equal to ir. And we could solve for i, which is e over r which we just found was negative BLV over R. Note the negative sign here means that we're going um, with the direction that we're going, but I in general is equal to BLV over R, and it's up to us to, to use our context to determine which direction it is. So you, what they're saying is that you could write this without the negative. It just tells you that the direction of the flow, which we could find from the cross product from the force definition at EMF, um, would tell you that V cross B would be upward but this is in the magnetic bar itself. So if I'm sending charges upward through the bar, that will therefore send it down through the resistor. Hence the negative that we see with the flux rule. So pretty dang cool, but be careful because the ambiguity can catch up to you. Pretty cool though. B, the magnetic force on the bar is, well, we know the force law is equal to F equal I. And then we have DL cross B. But since the L and the B are acting at 90 degrees, that's just ILB, but we just found what I was, so we can substitute it in, and we see that F is equal to negative B squared L squared V over R, which we'll definitely see this again, by the way, uh, but this again just tells us that we're pointing to the left, okay, so the speed at a later time, uh, time is given, um, at a later time is given as, with the initial condition V not equal V at zero equals V naught is, well, we have to use the force law to find what V is. Because F equals MA, and A is equal to dBdt, but we also just found what the force was in part B, so now we could set the two equal to each other and solve for V. Again, a separable equation. We've seen these before. Set it up, solve it through, and we see that uh, applying the initial condition yields V of T is equal to V naught e to the negative B squared L squared over M R times t. So these exponentials definitely keep playing a role here. All right, so for part d then, the energy goes into heating the into heat in the resistor, 
the power delivered to the resistor is P equal uh, I squared R. So if we know that the power is the rate of change of work with respect to time, we could also set these two equations equal to each other, i.e. dW over dt is equal to I squared R. We just found what I squared was, so we can use that again. And then we could cancel out the R's as such. Again, we know what everything is here. And now we have an equation with respect to time um, and a d uh, w with respect to time, so we could have another separable equation. Uh, it might behoove us to make this algebra algebraic substitution to kind of simplify things, so let alpha equal b squared l squared over mr, and then we could see how that simplifies through. So on our separation and integration, we see that we go from zero to infinity of the function. Nothing too crazy, just be careful how you uh, simplify it. You see that the infinity brings the x the exponent term down to zero, so you have a double negative there for when you evaluate at zero. But also you see that the alphas cancel and the negatives cancel and you're left with the one half after the integration times m times v naught squared. Fascinating.